So let's recap what we've done on the next page. Right? So what we're doing is a hypothesis test. Right? And it had a formal process even if you didn't quite realize it. We made a statement regarding the, the exploratory example. You might not have realized it, but if I hand you a die in class, you assume that all the dice I'm passing out are fair. Or fool you because of course they wouldn't be but that's that's step one you make a statement even in your mind about the nature of the population so you assume that the probability of rolling a five is going to be one six in other words p is one six that's a parameter right it's something you're assuming is true about the population of all possible die rolls for this die or for all the dice in the room then my students collect evidence right they roll the die and see how many they get right and make a table of those results Right, so they collect the data, so that's step two. And of course, in if you're just watching the video, you have to imagine a whole room full of students rolling the dice, because that's what they get to do. Feel free to go grab a die from your Monopoly board and roll it yourself if you so desire. Right, but then we analyzed those results, and we saw something was up with that one student. Well, he wasn't a student, my, my husband, Steve. Right, something was going on with Steve's results. So let's give him a red, right? because he was the red one in the table. And there's two ways to think about it. You can think of it as the p-value method. The, prob the chances of getting his results are really low, or he was far away from the rest of the group. That's the classical method. And either way, you know something was up with his die because his results were so unusual, right? If when you're in our class, usually students start calling out liar, cheater, you know, things like that, because they know that that shouldn't be happening just instinctually. And it's because instinctually, you know that the chances of him getting what he got is low, or you can see he's far away from the, from the normal group, from everybody else. I'll, I'll change that. So it says the regular group, the normal group, the, the usual group, right? The, the things you're usually expecting, right? And he's far away from that. Now you're going to do this over and over and over. We were actually testing the parameter P in our particular example here. So we were testing a proportion because you assume the proportion of fives is one sixth, right? This is a parameter. And when we assume dice are fair, we are assuming that parameter is a sixth like we expect. Okay, so we made that assumption. And then you test that assumption based off of everybody else. In other words, you go gather data and then you check it and see if what you expected to have happen happened. And you can test those parameters with statistics. And that's what that table was. It was a table of data values, right? And we get to know what the statistics are because we got to see them right here in a table. Right? We could calculate them out and everything. So we take those statistics and we test that parameter, right? Because you can't know what that die has as its proportion of fives until you actually roll it right this is some constant for every die in the student's hands and every die has its own parameter has its own probability of five but statistics right will be able to analyze that but every sample we would do would be different so if i took the same experiment and had another class do it it's going to be a different numbers right so every time you do it it's slightly different that's statistics but you're going to use those slightly different samples to test what you think is true about the population parameter now, the four parameters that we can test, and they should look very familiar to you because they're the same ones we worked with in Chapter 9, are the population proportion, which is what we were doing here, which is P, the mean, which is mu, the variance, and the standard deviation. And the variance and standard deviation, just like in Chapter 9, kind of go hand in hand because one is just the other one squared. Right? So those are the four parameters that we are going to be testing in Chapter 10, and chapter 11, quite frankly, and 12 to some extent as well, but 12 and 13 are gonna get a little trickier on us.